Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this twisted headband butt on the serger. I already have a tutorial on how to make this one here and it just stays with a raw edge because we're working with stretchy fabrics that don't fray on us and so I just like to wear it like this but in a recent live chat several of you asked if I can teach you how to make this on a serger because you just got a serger or you are not too familiar with it and you want to see how to start off with a small and simple project so that's what we're working on here today. I am going to be working with a stretch knit fabric this is called DBP also known as a double brushed polyester spandex. It's nice and stretchy, it's super soft, and it's nice and thin and lightweight. So I just cut a strip from my yardage here. All right, so for this headband, if you've watched my other uh, tutorial on how to do it on a sewing machine, you know that for the adult size, I recommend you cut the strip at five inches by 20 inches. Well, I'm gonna be making this one on the serger for my daughter today, and she's nine years old, so I'm going to cut the pieces at five inches by 18 inches, and you can adjust that length accordingly based on the kid's size. For a kid ages like five to eight, I find that 16 inches in length works well as long as you're working with a nice stretchy fabric. Next I'll grab my pins and I like to use ballpoint pins when I'm working with stretchy fabrics. You're going to fold each strip like this lengthwise onto itself so pretty sides touching. You should be looking at the wrong side of the fabric and we're going to place a couple pins down both of these long edges. Now we'll take both of our strips and head over to the serger. All right, now I have a few sergers, so I'm gonna be using for this tutorial uh, my one of my most basic ones. So this is a Juki MO104D. It's a fabulous little serger. For those of you that maybe don't have one, this is one to definitely look into. Now I have navy thread on here. This fabric features a mustard color and black and white. It doesn't matter. It's dark enough, nobody's gonna see it. I'm not gonna be you know, wasting time to change out the thread so that it matches perfectly on something like this. So that's why I'm using navy thread. And then I also have two needles loaded in this serger. I can do three or four thread overlock stitch on here. I already have it set up to four thread because I was working on some pajamas for my daughter and so I'm not gonna bother to change it. So this is a super easy, easy project. Now, as I start to feed it through here, the serger has a blade right here and it's going to be cutting the fabric as I go. This is polyester fabric and although I've already cut it to size, I am, or I should say I like to have my serger cut at least a little sliver off as it goes through. So it might end up being a little bit narrower and I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to feed this carefully through, make sure that you stop before the pins get anywhere near the blade. And if you're not familiar with a serger, it is trimming off the edge and then finishing it off as it goes through. Really, really pretty. And you see that navy even looks black. No big deal. Now this serger doesn't have speed control, so you got to control it by the amount of pressure that you press on the foot pedal, which is fine. And when I get to the end, I stitch off, so I have this tail. And when I have a long tail, then I'll bring it around here and I'll press the foot pedal again so that when I swing it through here, the blade now cuts it. All right, so that one's done. We're gonna repeat the same steps to the other strip of our fabric. I'm just gonna take my snips and trim off these serger thread tails. And I'm doing this because I will still go back and secure these seams so that this doesn't unravel because I'm not quite done with the project. So don't worry about that. I just don't like them in my way. All right, so I'm gonna reach in here. And just grab as much as you can. Think you're putting on pantyhose or something. And I'm gonna flip the whole tube right side out. Do the same thing to the other one.
All right, so once we flip out those two tubes, go ahead and place them in front of you with the seam that you just sewed going vertically in front like this. Now this is a polyester spandex fabric, so I don't wanna hit it with a hot iron. If you were working with say cotton lycra or cotton spandex, then absolutely you could go, you know, take this to your ironing board and give it a little bit of a press. But this polyester, I don't wanna hit it with an iron. And if I want to, after I'm done with the project, I can kind of touch it with a warm iron in some spots, but for now, We'll skip that, it doesn't look that bad. All right, so we're gonna turn one of these so that that seam still is facing me, but now I have this going horizontally here. Then I'm gonna take the next one and place it with that seam going face down on top of that other seam in this T shape, okay? So this one has no seam on top, this one the seam is touching the seam underneath. And then we'll just grab the ends, hold them together, you can place a clip or a pin if you want to. And then this guy here, go ahead and grab the ends too. And the way you wanna fold them is so that that seam is on the inside in case and you won't see it on the outside when you're wearing the headband. Then place another clip here. So you have these two kind of interlocking loops and then just bring them together, okay? And then match up all four raw edges here and place a clip through all four lining them up as best as you can. You can even try to center these seams, intersections here. All right, let's set up the serger again because all we have left to do is to serge through these four layers. So now you have to be mindful that the serger that you have will actually cut and stitch through here. So don't go very fast, start off slow and take your time with this. If you get this far on your serger and you can't seem to get it through, maybe the machine uh, doesn't do well with bulk, then you can always just finish it on your sewing machine, okay? But I just wanted to whip up this quick tutorial to show you how easy and quick it would be if you wanted to do all the steps on your serger. I wanna line these up a little bit better. And so for this step, also be mindful of the fabric that you're using. You don't wanna use something super duper bulky that you know I mean, and I say four layers, but there's really eight because each one is two layers of fabric in each loop, all right? So I'm going to lift my presser foot, place this there, and again, I'm lining it up so that the blade is going to take off just a little off the edge. And this serger is a workhorse, so I know it was gonna get through all of that, okay? Now when it comes to these thread tails, there are little tools that you can use to kind of feed the thread tails of the serger ends into your stitches. I don't even bother with that really. I can bring this over into the seam allowance here and on the sewing machine, just give it a few zigzag stitches to help tack that tail in place and then just trim off any excess that you might have. So that's what I'm gonna do for this and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm at the sewing machine. And I'm just going to select the zigzag stitch real quick and zigzag some of that tail end of the serger right onto the seam allowance itself. I just wanna make sure my zigzag is not wider than the seam allowance I used on the serger. So let me just make sure. Yep, that width is only a 3.4, so that should be good. I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple times. That's good, and plenty, just something to secure that tail end, and then I'll do the same thing to this one. And whatever's not been secured, I'll just trim it away. Okay, all right. So you can see I've anchored down the tail end here, so I'm just gonna trim away the excess, get rid of any last tails, and this bit here. These stitches were a little bit tighter because that's where I fed in the bulk of the headband to the serger, so I did a lot more stitching before it was able to kind of grab onto that fabric and continue stitching across. But you can just get rid of any little thread tails you see. And then all you have left to do is to flip it because this is the side that you see all right, so there is the finished headband. If you enjoyed this project, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Give it a try at home. If you have a serger that's still in a box in a closet, take it out. Give this project a try and let me know how it goes in the comments below. 
Don't forget to click the subscribe button also so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.